Scott Holbrook, president of Secure Tool Company. Uh, Secure Tool Company is a next generation tool store. Uh, we curate, we integrate, we invent tools that solve the world's biggest challenges. I'm actually here at the, the library today doing a little bit of a little bit of research. I actually like to, you know, read books. I got the, the money for nothing, can American capitalism survive? And you know, when I first got here, the you know, the lab is empty now, but you know, prior to this, it was actually filled with kids, um, middle school kids, probably some some junior high kids as well, and they were they were all playing video games, uh, which you know kind of got me to thinking. I was already here doing some you know research on you know, UBI that kind of thing, uh, but it really got me thinking about play to earn gaming and the fact that it's not an understood model. Um, there seems to be kind of a you know, kind of a hazy understanding that, oh, it's, it's a way to play video games and make money, but nothing really goes much deeper than that. So I just want to take the time to, you know, really quickly sort of give a, a very broad 30,000 foot view of what play to earn gaming is and how exactly it works and how exactly you make money. Um, so it's it's not what you think in terms of, you know, Koreans building esports stadiums. Uh, that model is more akin to uh, professional athletes, whereby you get sponsorships and you have to be, you know, very, very good at, at the game and, and dedicate a, a lot of time to it. Um, you know, many, many, many hours a day, um, and even then, you know, your your income isn't necessarily based on your effort, but more based on your, you know, a marketability um, and then b some other things you just really can't control. Um, and so that, that's not what we're talking about here. Uh, such a model is not going to be uh, effective for any sort of universal basic income, you know, in the same way that, you know, being a professional athlete is not going to be effective. Of all the kids that play basketball in Rucker Park, you know, one out of thousands of them actually make it to the NBA um, or you know, even a minor league where they can actually support themselves and their family off of the, the money that they get. Um, and so that's not what we're looking at. So what play to earn gaming is, um, and, and the way it's best to think about it, um, the, the, the question is always, where does the money come from? You know, people see the cryptocurrencies, the coins, uh, for example, Star Atlas and the Atlas coin, and they, they see that you can sell it on the open market and people buy it. But, you know, the, 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 the question has never really been publicly asked or, or answered that I can find, you know, where, where does the money actually come from? And so I want to present, you know, in this video, a, a new model, a, a new way of thinking about play to earn gaming. Um, because this is, you know, really going to you know, help people understand why it works the way it does and, you know, why it's, you know, it's not a scam. And so, you know, one thing that all these books are, are talking about, um, and, you know, I guess the perennial problem of capitalism is about wealth distribution and, and wealth transfer. Um, and so what Play to Earn Gaming does is it actually is a mechanism for facilitating that wealth transfer. Um, and I'm going to explain how. So typically... In order to have leisure, you know, you've got to have, you know, disposable income of some sort. You know, that's why you don't see, you know, a whole lot of video games at, you know, $60, $80, $100 a pop, you know, being bought by people in underserved communities. You know, one, they don't have computers to play them. And then two, even if they did, those computers would probably be used for something uh, other than, uh, you know, frivolous, quote unquote, you know, gaming. Um, and so... Uh, the people that are playing games, especially games that require the amount of capital investment like a Star Atlas would, are people that have disposable income. You know, these are the people that we consider wealthy. The fact that they're playing the games, spending money on the games, shows that they have excess uh, capital, excess money um, that could be distributed elsewhere. Um, and what Play Darren Gaming does is it facilitates that distribution. And so think about it this way. You have an individual... Um, probably the child of a, a well-off family, you know, middle class or higher, and they have a desire to play the game. In order to play that game, they need money, right? So they, they go to their parents and they say, you know, mom, I'd like to play this game. And in the same way that parents buy their kids Xboxes and Playstations uh, or subscriptions to WoW, you know, parents will give them the money they need in order to play this game of Star Atlas. And once they, they get that money, they, they go, they, they purchase the Atlas coin, um, and then they start playing the game. And so what ends up happening is that money um, ends up being transferred to, you know, anyone that, that can play the game. And so if you're able to give underserved communities an opportunity to get into the game um, of Star Atlas, you know, give them the, the materials they need, the computers, the training in order to effectively play the game, what you're actually doing is giving them a way to get the, the money, the wealth that's being transferred from the, the original game player, um, you know, the middle class family and up, you know, down to 
the the underserved communities um, in the sense that you know the money initially starts at the top and then as they spend money to play the game they buy more and more expensive ships or or do whatever it is they do in order to get that the value that they want out of it then the underserved communities the uh, you know the, the kids that are you know in the public library or, or in the public library earlier you know playing these games now have an opportunity to you know capture some of that wealth um, in the fact that they can also play the game and they can earn Atlas in the game and then you can give them the training that they need in order to take that Atlas, that, that value that's created in the game and trade it on the open market outside the game and actually provide income opportunities. Uh, and so, you know, the real power of play to earn gaming isn't necessarily that, oh, oh, I can play video games and make money. You know, the real power of play to earn game is enabled by, you know, blockchain and GameFi is that it is a, a method of wealth, a uh, facilitation of wealth transfer that, that, that nobody takes issue with um, because we're not taking money from the rich and giving it to the poor. You know, we're not Robin Hood. Uh, you know, the wealthy and those with the disposable income are actually using their disposable income to get entertainment, value, pleasure, um, which is, you know, what they're paying for. And then instead of that that money, that wealth going to a centralized, like a game company, like a Blizzard for, for World of Warcraft or, you know, EA Sports for, for your sports game, uh, that money instead goes directly to other people that are playing the game. And those people playing the game can come from, from anywhere uh, as long as you get the tools to do so. And so that's what we as Secure Tool do. Uh, we provide the tools to underserved communities. We provide the training to underserved communities to help them play the game effectively, to help them facilitate that wealth transfer coming to themselves um, as opposed to going to a centralized game company, which gives it to you know more shareholders or um, you know reinvestment in different games and you know, whatever they do there. And so that's that's how play to earn gaming should be thought of, and that's why play to earn gaming is going to be a key piece. Uh, you know, game fi general, uh, game fi industry in general is going to be a key piece in uh, solving the world's biggest challenge of of, of a poverty um, and, and underrepresentation and, and lack of um, economic opportunities. It solves that challenge by giving an equitable transfer, uh, being a mechanism mechanism for an equitable transfer of wealth, you know, whereby those that are giving the wealth are getting the value they want out of it. Um, and then that wealth, instead of going to other wealth, you know, can now trickle down to uh, underserved communities and give them, you know, that opportunity that they need in order to, to earn income for their families. And so just, uh, just a quick thought. Um, just want to put that out there for you guys so that you can have you know better understanding of the mechanics behind play to earn gaming. And if you want to get you know specific about you know Star Atlas or you know how it's being used to facilitate this transfer, you know by Secure Tool, um, then go ahead and check out other videos. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if there's a topic that you want to see covered in these videos, let us know. We, we do our best to get everything that you know the community wants to hear. And uh, you know I thank you all for watching, and we'll we'll see you next time.